and welcome to Kaji's channel. Sa dami-dami ba naman ng process sa bookkeeping, alin ba doon yung pinakamahirap? Alin ba doon yung pinaka-challenging? So kung interested kang malaman ang sagot sa tanong na yan, please keep on watching until the end. Do not skip para wala kang mamiss na tips and tricks na i-share ko throughout the video. So without further ado, let's get started! Kung paano pa lang sa chow na to, I'm Kaji, virtual assistant, executive assistant, bookkeeper, accountant. So kahit anong work pinapasok ko, basta online, kasi online work is amazing! Sa chow na to, dinidiscuss natin more on online work tips and tricks, and mga success stories. So, kung interested ka sa mga topic na yun, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the notification bell para wala kang ma-miss na video na ina-upload ni Kaji every single week. As a virtual bookkeeper, you know na ang bookkeeping task is not as easy kung ano yung iniisip ng iba. Okay? It's not always an easy task. There are tasks na sobrang hirap kung i-compare mo sa ibang tasks ng isang bookkeeper, alright? Like, for example, uploading na bang statement, mahirap ba? Hindi siya ganun kahirap, okay? Pero there are cases na makaka-encounter ka ng mga errors and mga mistakes, but the good thing is, you can easily identify kung ano ba yung mistake na nagawa mo at paano mo siya masasolve, okay? So, hindi ang bank reconciliation ang pinakamahirap na process. Pag-create ng account, mahirap ba, Kaji? Hindi siya ganun kahirap. And as long as meron ka nun data na kakailanganin mo to set up the accounts, like the company name, yung email address, yung phone number, yung address, yung location, etc., everything will be okay. And sobrang dali mo lang masaset up yung accounts ng client mo. Mapaano ang accounting software man yan, alright? Eh, Kaji, pag-create ng chart of accounts, mahirap ba? Kung ikaw ay isang bookkeeper na na nag-work na as a bookkeeper for so many years, then of course, yung pag-create ng chart of accounts is hindi na ganun kahirap. And as long as meron kang template na pwedeng i-edit, pwedeng i-magdagdag, pwedeng mag-delete, then pwede mo na gamitin yun. So, hindi ganun kahirap mag-create ng chart of accounts. Pag-enter ng bills, ganun ba kahirap? Hindi din. Kasi once you have the available documents, let's say you have the receipt, you have, you have the bills, once na meron kang copy niyan, all you have to do is to copy and paste yung mga data doon sa bill section ng accounting software nyo. Ganun din sa sales invoice. As long as alam mo kung sino yung customer, kailan siya due, magkano yung amount, ilang quantity, sobrang dali mong magagawa ang pag-create ng sales invoice. So, ngayon ka, G, lahat naman ang sinasabi mo madali, eh ano ba yung pinakamahirap na process pagdating sa bookkeeping? The most difficult process in bookkeeping is yung reconciliation and categorization. So, kapag sinabi natin categorization, ito yung mga transaction from the bank na kailangan mo i-categorize sa tamang account category. For example, may receive item, may spent item. Paano mo i-categorize ngayon yung receive item? Pag receive, hindi, porket pumasok ba yan sa bank? Kailangan income na agad? Hindi, okay? So, ngayon, kailangan mong i-identify, i-analyze ng sobra kung ano ba yung nature ng transaction na yun. Hindi porket na-receive siya sa banko, pumasok siya, nadagdagan yung pera sa banko, is income na. There are cases na kahit receive siya, hindi siya income, kundi transfer lang pala from one bank to another. Alright? O kaya naman, refund lang pala ng expense. O kaya naman, nag-top nag up lang si, si client or nag-deposit lang si client para lang magkaroon ng pera yung bank account na yun. So, hindi mo siya kailangang i-record ng income. So, kailangan mo talagang intindihin what is the nature of that transaction and ano yung purpose niya. Okay? Para ma-record mo siya ng tama. So, ganun din naman kapag nakakita ka ng spent. Lahat ba ng spent i-record mo as expenses? Siyempre, hindi. Maraming reason kung bakit nagkakaroon or nag may nakakakita tayo ng mga withdrawals or spent item sa bank statement, okay? So, kapag nakakita tayo ng uh, spent item sa bank statement, hindi mo agad siya i-record as expense. Kasi, pwede siyang refund ng sales, 
Pwede rin naman siyang transfer mo from that bank to another bank. Or pwede rin naman na payment mo sa credit card. Alright? And sobrang dami pa. So, kailangan talaga matinding pag-analyze and kailangan familiar ka sa bawat transaction na lumalabas sa mga bank ng, ng client mo. For, katulad dun sa course na ina-offer ni Kaji, karamihan sa mga mentees ko is nahihirapan silang mag-categorize ng mga transaction. Kasi, wala silang idea kung ano ba yung nature ng business. So, as a bookkeeper, para mas mapadali yung categorization process mo, kailangan alam mo kung ano ba yung mga common expenses na meron si client, ano ba nagagaling yung income niya, ano ba yung list ng bank accounts niya, para alam mo kung kailan siya bank transfer, kailan siya expense, kailan siya asset, kailan siya liability, and kailan siya income. Okay, so kailangan mo siyang i-identify. Hindi porket spend ay expense na agad. Pwede siyang asset. Okay? Hindi porket na-receive mo, income na yan. Pwede siyang transfer from bank. Pwede rin naman siyang refund ng expense. And pwede rin naman siyang loan. Okay? So, nakatanggap ka ng pera kasi nag-loan. Or nakita mo yung papasok na pera sa bank statement. Kasi pala, nag-loan pala si client mo. So, hindi mo siya pwede i-record as income. So, Sobrang hirap na process ang categorization. So, ang technique, so, during the onboarding call, kailangan i-ask mo si client mo ano yung mga common transactions na makikita mo sa bank and ano yung mga common expenses niya, ano yung mga common software na pinabayaran niya, may VA ba siya, may employees ba siya, ano ba yung source of income niya. So, ba, for example, e-commerce. Aside from e-commerce, mayro pa ba ako may expect na makita sa bank statement mo na another source of income mo? Baka pala may part-time siya na yan. Na, na trabaho. So, kailangan mo siyang alam. Alright? Another task of a bookkeeper na sobrang hirap is yung tinatawag nating bank reconciliation. Pag sinabi nating reconciliation, it is the process of comparing yung balances sa accounting software mo with the balances doon sa bank statement na meron ka to make sure na they are accurate and they are balanced. So, kailangan kung ano yung balance sa bank statement siyang balance doon sa accounting software. For example, as of March 31, 2023, ang balance sa bank is 1 million. So, dapat sa accounting software mo, mapazero, wave, QuickBooks, or any other software man yan, dapat yan ay parehas. Okay? Walang labis, walang kulang. So, reconciliation can be challenging for several reasons. So, number one dyan is it requires a lot of attention to detail. So, kailangan lahat ng transaction from the bank statement is uploaded sa inyong accounting software. Every transaction need to be checked and verified na na-upload na ba siya, na-record ba siya, na-double ba siya, or hindi. So, bank reconciliation is really time-consuming and mistakes can happen talaga sometimes, Okay? And mistake can be costly. So, ibig sabihin, kapag nagkar nagkaroon ka ng mistake, sayang yung time. So, ba diba, sayang yung effort mo na, yung oras na nakonsume mo para sa pag-reconcile nun. Which is, pwede mo namang magawa sa ibang bagay na kumikita ka pa. And then, sobrang time-consuming talaga niya. Kasi, once na hindi mo makita kung saan nagkulang yung bank reconciliation mo, paniguradong kung there are like 1,000 transactions, ginawa mo na lahat ng pwede mong gawin just to identify kung ano yung kulang, ang last option mo is to check yung transactions one by one, kahit ba yan ay eh, 1,000 transactions pa. So, another thing about reconciliation is, yung reconciliation will require talaga ng super strong na understanding ng accounting and bookkeeping procedure. So, kailangan mo ma-identify yung mga errors, saan ka nagkamali, how to track down yung mga missing transactions, how to adjust your record, etc. So, kailangan mo talagang malaman kung paano siya i-adjust ng tama. Alright? So, para, para mas mapadali yung process mo as a bookkeeper sa pag-reconcile at pagka-categorize. So, katulad ko kanina, kailangan aware ka sa mga transactions ng business. So, you have to ask your clients during the onboarding call. And of course, kailangan mo rin mag-reconcile regularly. For example, mas maganda na Since may bank statement ka, i-reconcile mo yan on a monthly basis. Tama ba na ito ang balance sa bank at ito ang balance sa accounting software? Kung mali, then madali mo siya ma-identify. Pero kung gagawin mo siya yearly, 
Kung ang daming transactions, sobrang hirap mo ma-track down. Kung alin yung mistake mo, alin yung duplicates, alin yung kulang. So, kailangan mag-reconcile ka regularly. So, sana may natutunan kayo sa video na to. Kahit sobrang hirap ng bank reconciliation and categorization, kung meron ka namang attention to detail and strong understanding ng uh, basic principles of bookkeeping, then syempre, madali mo yung masosolve. So, yes, and uh, kung may question pa kayo about uh, process ng bookkeeping or meron kayong specific video na dapat uh, na gusto gawin ni Kaji, just let me know sa comment section and I'll create a video for you. And I'll see you on my next video. Bye!